Thing. Order! Order! And you are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Sir Alan Duncan left government in 2019 after working in Westminster for nearly three decades as an MP and government minister. His diaries are now being published in a book out next week. In the thick of it covers the fall of two prime ministers and the fallout of the Brexit referendum, with acerbic portraits of those with whom he worked alongside. In his book, Sir Alan calls Gavin Williamson a venomous, self-seeking little <laughs> He describes Priti Patel as a complete and utter nightmare, and Michael Gove as an unctuous freak who generates his own publicity. While the Prime Minister is lambasted as a selfish, ill-disciplined, shambolic, shameless clot, and a clown, a self-centred ego, and an embarrassing buffoon. Earlier this week, I spoke to Sir Alan and asked him to give me a flavour of some of these comments. Well, I, again, I mean, these are not permanent views, but in the moment, you know, for instance, when uh, Michael Gove suddenly, after being, uh, after being the partner, as it were, of Boris Johnson in the leadership election, suddenly decided to go alone, I sort of explode and say, you know, what the hell? How can you trust a guy who does that? You're obviously going to ask me about Boris, the Prime Minister, and, you know, again, the, the book is, is fair. It explains what a lot of people feel uh, about Boris, which is that he is a phenomenon, but he can also be utterly exasperating. Uh, but my view is clear that, you know, during all the Brexit fighting in Parliament, I felt that the whole ship might sink, so I was loyal to Theresa May, and indeed I was loyal to him when he was uh, Foreign Secretary and I was his deputy. You're being very diplomatic now, though, because when you think people are behaving badly, you do not mince your words. I mean, you call Michael Gove a wacky weirdo and untrustworthy. You say Philip Hammond was only interested in rich countries and Gavin Williamson was a venomous, self-seeking little bleep. Um, those are quite extraordinary words. Well, I think, you know, my concern about Phil Philip Hammond has to be seen in context, which is that I've been going to Yemen for 30, 35 years and I handled Yemen and its fundraising during the Arab Spring when I was development minister. I was then envoy to it. And I, I felt that the, we as the British have a, an obligation, if you like, to Yemen. Historically, we were, we were there and then we left in 1968. And I think with more interest in that country, we could have possibly stopped the war that's now been going on for years. You've had a long interest and uh, have had lots of experience in the Middle East, but you believe <laughs> you were stopped from becoming Middle East Minister. Can you just tell us about that? Yes, I was offered the job of uh, Foreign Minister, uh, implicitly to be in charge of the Middle East. And before it was even announced, in what I consider to be an absolutely improper, if not scandalous, intrusion in our public life, uh, the top apparatus of the Conservative Friends of Israel and other like-minded people used their influence in Number 10 in the Foreign Office to lobby to stop me getting it, quite simply because they don't approve of my views on Palestine. And I think that the way in which uh, uh, forces lobbied to stop me is evidence of the fact that this is a very, very improper relationship and that Jewish support, which we welcome and encourage, should be decoupled from representation within UK politics of funding allied to the interests of another country. And on the issue of lobbying, um, David Cameron, your former boss, um, do you think he has questions to answer? No, I, I mean, I think actually um, what puzzles me here is quite how uh, the Cabinet Secretary uh, suddenly decided that uh, that was the, um, uh, you know, that he was entitled, if you like, to give this guy um, a business card and suddenly endorse a financing scheme for the public sector. For it suddenly to be short-circuited and go straight into the bloodstream of government via the office of the Cabinet Secretary, I, I think is very odd.